Hey, what's up, everybody? And welcome to Chicagoland Baseball Chronicles. My name is Bo Rab, and you know the business. If you woke up this morning, you are winning. And my host, Bill Haley, what's up, dog? Hey, what's going on, Bo? Good to see you, man. All good, all good. Well, we got we got a um, season three coming up. You know, we had to take a little break from baseball season and let everybody do what they're doing. You know, the camps and the, the kids and everything else. So we got a nice um, format coming up. Going different twists too. We're gonna get some of these young people up in here, man, because we was having a problem with uh, a lot of the old school guys aren't literally and we couldn't keep a schedule on it so we just gonna mix it up we're gonna get some of the people that didn't get drafted you know what you think about that bill i think it's a great idea everybody's story is is worth being told um i think it's a great thing to be able to get on the air and share these stories you see a lot of common things a lot of guys that come through the swag a lot of guys that go to minor league ball even though they weren't on the same teams even though they didn't get drafted during the same year they experience some of the same things. When you talk to guys like Jeff, when you talk to guys like Sean Livesey, um, a lot of these guys right. got drafted different years, go to different organizations, but still they experience some of the same challenges as they try to move their way up through these major league systems. And it was uh, really interesting to hear the guys going through some of the same challenges, some of the same barriers they were facing, even though they won different organizations, drafted during different years, things like that. So um, I, I really enjoyed getting the stories out from the pioneers, but I'm really excited about getting to speak to some of these current ball players, some of the young guys who are out there on the field putting in the work yeah. and uh, find out what they're going through. Absolutely. And um, Jerry Flowers, we, uh, he's going to come back on with us here. We're going to get some of these people that are active. You know, especially like Jerry, uh, who's who's a scout, and and for people that don't know, he uh his uh, number one draft pick last year was um, uh, Cam Collier, a Chicagoland baseball legend's son of that time, who came up in Chicago, and they just took a route to go there. He was the number one pick. Congrats to him on that, and he was doing very well uh, last time I checked, and um. I don't know. We yeah, we were talking before we started taping. And the draft, uh, the draft uh, this year with our people and uh, locally was was pretty thin. Huh? Well, you know, it kind of goes up and up and downs. Oh, yeah. uh, it kind of kind of goes comes and goes in cycles. Got to put a lot of work in. Um, you mentioned Cam, who we're gonna always claim. Uh, Lou, always, of course, a Chicago native. Cam uh, moved down to Georgia. Yeah. And uh, the latter part of his development, even though his foundation was here in Chicago with his dad and Luke Collier Stars, um, he, he really made a name for himself down in Georgia at the showcases, working with Marquise Grissom, Marvin Freeman, um, left high school early, went to, went to Chipola Junior College, tore that up. Absolutely. And as you mentioned, even in, in, even in the Major League Fall League, he went out to Arizona and, you know, right. it's the same thing, super consistent kid really focused he's gonna do his thing right and um also um i talked with um uh ed howard ed howard mm. came through the barbershop silk silk yes he came mm. he looks real good you know for people that don't know he had a real a freak injury a real freak yeah injury. hip injury his, hip injury it was in his hip. yeah man he mm -hmm. you know uh but he uh came up out of it pretty good he told me personally in the barbershop that um uh, He's gonna start baseball activity, spring training. So it's it, you okay. know it's all it's all pretty ups. He's in good spirits. He's in no pain, and you know they gonna you know they gonna get a closer look at him. So you know, well, Ed, Ed's gonna the, always be fine. Ed's gonna be fine. Mom, dad, yeah, sisters. Yeah. He just comes from a really really solid family. Um, really exceptional kid. He's gonna be fine. Uh, I'm glad to hear that he's doing well. I, you know, I haven't been in contact right. with him. Glad to hear you spoke with him, but man, Ed Howard's gonna be fine. Yeah, yeah, well, he got that bag too now. <laughs> he earned it. He earned it. So that's one he thing. They go, they he absolutely, and they gonna they gonna mm -hmm. they gonna take a longer look at him, and that's good too. And um, mm -hmm. I was talking earlier with um, some of my basketball 
guys, you know, people that know, that really know me, you know, I keep mm -hmm. up with all of the hoopsters. And I was on uh, okay. Marcus Liberty and Bobby Reed, them show, you dig? And uh, okay. Okay. they gave me a invite to come on. And you know me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell it. So I'm going to be on their I'm gonna show? Get on the subject of he told me he was going to plug me okay. in and get me on there. A lot of people don't know. Oh, well, Bo Rap, what you going to be on a basketball show for? Well, mm -hmm. Bo Rap had, had the game too, you dig? You know, I come okay. from an era where we the sports. And I'm enlightening people on some of the demise of bad baseball. I hate to say it, you know, and you know it's the truth, that um, – basketball hurt us because we got a lot of baseball players on the basketball court you know okay and, well, what are some of them oh shoot i can go way back like uh byron Irvin. i'm gonna go right there mm. Mm. come Old on family. who did I, before Old he pick up family. for basketball who was he playing who was byron playing for bill who was he playing for the whole family's jrw big time your dad okay mom, byron was playing for your there. daddy he was yeah. on the All Star team. Byron was a little different, but all of them played before they Lance, thought about it. Nick, Mikey, everybody. All played. of them. All of them. Because, you know, I really, like I said, I called Byron because Byron was on the, the little team under my team. And they mm -hmm. had aspirations of going going to the World Series. They were that good. He had some killers yeah, that some of them guys. came so, and went to Semion. Fouch and all mm -hmm. of them. TC. He played with TC and all of them. Mm -hmm. So he was Shout in that out to the Mac Fire. Well. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, but I'm saying a lot of people don't really know that. You know, okay. they don't know that. Lot of, you know, so I'm get on their show. I ain't gonna spill all the beans on our show <laughs> about the hoopers. You dig? Mm -hmm. But yeah, I got some, I got something to tell them over there. But I'll, I'll be looking forward so to that. With us, um, yeah, they they give me the call. You know, people don't know. I ain't gonna do nothing but tell the truth. You know, I can't make this shit up. You know, mm -hmm. I really can't. But uh uh we I'm looking forward like Charlie Scott. We still didn't do okay. Wes. Um mm -hmm. um Marvell be in and out, reach to me and reach back. But you know, we got a Rolodex of people from the old school. You know, we won't hear from Tony Anderson. Oh my, we're gonna we're gonna tell some tell some of some stories, man. We're gonna man everybody didn't go pro. All right. Mm -hmm. So we gonna make it, you know, get some of the unsung heroes a chance to tell it, you know, including myself, because I played okay. in some prolific, yeah. some prolific games, and you know it, because you were there. You saw we played in some real, um, uh, what would we say, uh, uh, monumental games that kind of mm -hmm. changed the direction for baseball a little a bit before and through what they, what what Luke call it, the dry period. The dry period. That's what Luke called call it. it. Yeah. The dry period. And I, the Michael Jordan era. Shit. They had me thinking I wanted to be like Mike. <laughs> <laughs> all five foot shit, eight. I was going up there dunking and shit. Mm. Yeah, all five, five foot seven. I, I take that other itch, though. Shit. Okay. Man, the dry okay. period had me thinking. I, I wanted to be like Mike, too, Bill. But um, okay. that's what okay. we had with the show, man. Well, think about that, man. What's your thoughts, man? I love it. I'm, I'm I'm ready to get back going. Um, fishing season is winding down. Like you say, baseball season is winding down, and uh, right. you know we've been getting good responses for every show. We really had some dynamic guests, and it sounds like you got a really dynamic list set up. And like you say, I, I want to hear um, from some of these yeah. young guys, guys that's out on the field right now, yeah. and um, just keep it going, man. Yeah. I think people enjoy that's hearing the stories, yeah. and I think it's really important that we can document yeah. these stories. Uh, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. But we're gonna we're gonna stay on our format too, also with our old school legends. You know, we just mm -hmm. we'll mm -hmm. just get them as we can. You know what I mean? No by no absolutely. specific order or nothing like that. But uh, we're gonna keep this thing going. Uh, on a final note, um, what's going on with Jackie Robinson West, the program? Where we at? What's going on? Future, what's up? Man, JIW is looking good. You know, two years ago we celebrated the 50th anniversary. <laughs> Since um, 2016, we've been under the leadership of Ty Prince. Ty Prince has been our president. And he's really, really moving the league forward. Um, we're back in the teenage division. 2021. Oh, really? Our yeah, we're okay. back in. Ty has got us back in the teenage division. 2021, our 13-year-olds won the state championship. Oh, 
And then those guys came back as 14 year olds, 13 and 14 year olds this summer, 2022, and they finished in the final four in the uh, state tournament. So we're really excited. Um, like I said, Todd has got us back in the teenage division. Of course, you know, we always got the shorties, but we got one division, Bo, that I'm really, we really proud of, and that's, that's called the challenger division. And um, what, what that provides is we have kids with special needs, boys and girls with special needs, um, anywhere on the autism okay. spectrum can come out and participate in Little League. Okay. okay. Um, this year we had two educators okay. from Whistler Elementary School, Coach Gus McGill and Coach Armstrong, who came out and took over that Challenger program, um, put a, pr breathed a lot of new life into it, and we're super excited about that. That's boys and girls um, with special needs, any kind of uh, mental challenges or physical challenges. Can come out and play little league no boundary restrictions just come on out and uh like i said we're really excited about that and we're super excited about being back in that teenage division um we got some indoor dates coming up soon gonna get back to work indoors but uh jiw is doing well man Every, everybody's doing well that's good I, I i was uh i didn't know about the um the teenage division and yeah. uh, what mm -hmm. age groups what what age group is that what are we doing so last year we went all the way up to 14. Last year, the 14 year olds finished in the final four in the state. But in 2021, when those kids were 13, they actually won. They were state champions, Illinois state champs. And uh, so it's just natural to try to stretch out to 15 to 16 next year. And that's as high as uh, Little League goes is 16. They don't go beyond 16. Uh, we back on the big field. The field is lit up. We got a brand new, brand new side, everything. Brand new field was put in last year. I, I was I was just about that I was just about mm -hmm. to ask that. So where is this right. the big where's the big league field at? Where's it at? It's on the corner of 107th and Sangamon. So um it's not the field you played on the, the big league field and the little league field switch switch sides. So that's on 107th and Sangamon. Got lights, brand new side. And uh those games are on Monday and Tuesday. We was playing double hitters every Monday and Tuesday night. I think the kids probably played about 20 games and uh it was really good it was really competitive league and uh okay super excited about that um keeping that going next season uh where are the these kids uh from this particular team what schools do they attend are these i know they're pretty spread out you know because mm -hmm. when we were playing you know we all monopolized and went to mm -hmm. semion mm -hmm. <laughs> before right. so, you know everybody got that spread where are they right so these kids that i'm talking about that finished fourth and top four in the state they are most of my freshmen this year i think we have about four or five kids wow. down in limbloom wow. down in limbloom uh one of our guys wow. is the quarterback over at brother rice and uh they, they are kind of spread i think we got a couple kids off that team in kenwood but they are spread out and uh most of those kids are freshmen this year right? Well, you know what? I'm gonna shed some light mm. just because you said that. You said one mm. of the kids is the quarterback at yes. um brother. What did you say, brother Rice? Yes. yes. And see, I want to shed some great. light on. Big time. I want to shed some light on something that, that I, I was saving for uh Marcus Liberty them show, but I'm gonna what say it got? right here, here too. Yeah. Athletic is like I mean, farming. Farmers when they grow corn on one field they do what they call rotate their crops that's what they used to do i'm getting that's a whole mm -hmm. nother cup of tea but they used to rotate their crops because corn would take the nitrogen out the soil then the next year they would grow soybeans on that particular same spot because the soybeans will put the nitrogen back and they'll grow corn mm -hmm. you know vice versa and continuously do that well, sports operates the same way. They got these guys oversaturating them, oversaturating their bodies with uh, basketball. You can still work on your craft in your offseason, but you can use some other muscles in your body instead of repetitively using the same muscles and ligaments on a strenuous basis. By the time you get to that other level, if you are of that caliber, you're going to be burnt out. And that's why these kids are all fucked up now i said it yeah mm. I, I can't hold it back and that wasn't the case back then you got a lot of cats like i'm gonna say like marcus liberty marcus if i'd have seen you on the mound brother can you mm. imagine you six foot six foot, six eight. foot eight man 
He's six eight. Come on, man. We know how, how tall is Marvin Freeman. Six seven. Six seven. Six six. Easy. Man, it, 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 did he make a million dollars? No, he got <laughs> I rest. I rest my case. I mean, you know, just the thought of it. We're not saying, and I guarantee you that that you know. Marcus them and his brother stretching them. I bet they picked up a, a baseball first. I know they was playing mm -hmm. strikeout. I saw them boxes mm -hmm. at the bottom of the of the building at the Hilly Homes. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm just mm -hmm. just that. But you know, you I knew cats like Tony Pruitt. Tony Pruitt Robinson. played baseball. Andre Battle. They played base. Yeah, he played baseball Simeon. first, and he he no, he didn't play a Simeon. I told him you should have came you know you mm -hmm. that you know but they were guys that are on other uh sports teams at Simeon that played multiple sports the guy that was with me um uh my co-captain John Hurt all American football mm -hmm. player Michigan State University he was all city Isaac Carter them you know but I'm not just ba basketball but other sports you know back in the day you know football players the wide receivers they played baseball and track you know, mm -hmm. the power was playing. Anton Walker, Anton Walker played wrestling. baseball. You know, he was going to go to Simeon, too. You know, I'm plugged with his daddy, Dane Seats, who uh, okay. got drafted by the Cincinnati Reds, played on the legendary um, Askew Pirates and the Steel City, the Steel City uh, team, you know, that legendary team with Roman and them. His daddy mm -hmm. played on that team, and he was supposed to come to Simeon. He told me the story. I got to get it all the way down, Pac. But some kind of way, um, uh, uh, everyone, you know, wasn't going for it like that. You know, Hamrick was a special, Who wasn't going for it? You know, Bob Hamrick. He was one of the mm. first ones that stopped him from playing two sports. Yep, I said it. He, Ray Battle Ray Battle had gas. Ivan Young was on our team at Comiskey Park. He told that man, he said in his voice, son, if you're going to play for me, you're going to have to try out again. <laughs> he said I Ivan Young is at the tryout. <laughs> Ivan Young is at the Ivan, tryout. Big <laughs> he told him that big eye by five. We was, he didn't know where the fuck it was gonna go. But by the time next year, would they had him throwing it over the plate? You dig? Mm -hmm. But he was throwing man, and night he was throwing just as hard as Twain. Except he didn't know where it was gonna go. But we was gonna work okay. with. Him. But you know that's just think of it. You know I wasn't no, I was a, I'm an athlete. I learned how to play basketball. My guys them taught me, but I got taught by bad boys, Lonzo Skanes, Lee Hickman, you know, Lamont Lamont uh Larkins, uh Thomas Pinckney, uh Hope, you know. And you know, it was a lot of guys down there. I had a half down there, you mm -hmm. know. I just didn't apply it, you know, until later on. You know, so with that, you know, you you could come if you're athlete, you athlete. But I say that to not mess up your, your body, man, you know, or oversaturate your muscle. Your body has muscle memory. And I think they oversaturate their uh their muscle memory. And that's why they don't relax. I believe I believe um I believe Derek Rose played some baseball. Uh he did from uh, he told me briefly, but I don't know to what magnitude most of us most of us played everything whatever season it was then you know you had to back then you know you had to or they will sit your ass stay your ass in the house you know if you mm -hmm. want to come out you had to do what everybody else was doing you know especially on the low end where we had we did we played hockey we played mm -hmm. hockey and i was just let these kids play other sports it you know because it's hurting baseball would you agree to that the numbers are down. I mean, there's no doubt about that. The numbers are down. Uh, for what, whatever reason <laughs> is causing that, the, the numbers are down. I'll, I'm going to throw another name out there. Then it's going, the more people I name, I, I'm trying to save this shit for they show. Brian Orange. Mm. <laughs> Big Played with Derrick Rose them, right? Yeah, he played for right? John W. Dodgers, too. Get that ball. Oh, see? see man. He, hey, check this out. Now, Brian Orange was a freshman on the city championship team. That He was in right field for Coach Franklin. He threw a brother out from the outfield wall, man, at mm -hmm. home plate. I was there. I can't make shit up. Yeah. yeah. Ham, he cut his knee. But, you know, he objected. He was a two-sport two star. 
And for mm-hmm. some apparent reason, his singing, he played, I want to say he played three years, dog. But baseball? I want to say he played, yeah. I want to say he played three. And I went, Yeah, he's big time JRW. His name rings out. His name still rings out JRW. See, I'm just, you know, they don't know. There's a lot of them, man. There's so many. And um, I mean, if they call me on the show, that's what I want to talk about. A lot of these cats out there that's power forwards and and and, and, and gods and sinners that, that got a million dollars in front of their hand and don't even know it, you know? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, that's just the trajectory of it. We know it. And that's how, that's how that was the formula. But, but, hey, it is what it is, but... Maybe we can just help our sport, just enlighten them. That's what this show is all about, right? Spreading information, sharing the stories, documenting the stories, and giving people the opportunity to tell what really happened. Yeah. So, hey, Bill, uh, I think that's where we're at right now. So let's try to reach out to some of these people, the, the Buster Kings, the Charlie mm. Scotts, the Freeman mm-hmm. Bull Wallys. I hope y'all see this. Tony Hubbard, it's, it's y'all time. Tony, Tony Anderson. Garland. Tony Garland. Yeah, Tony Garland. Absolutely. We talk about Big Pete. That was his best friend. So who best to talk about Pete or Kirby Puckett is mm. Tony Garland. Right? There we go. There we go. All right. Hey, Bill. So uh, until next time, y'all, hey, peace be with y'all. Okay?